words of sri aurobindo from the book the mother part 2 letters on the mother by our lord chapter 9 the mother and the working of the ashram page 270 topic the mother's use of the mahakali method sri aurobindo says all these things depend on the person the condition the circumstances the mother uses the method you speak of the mahakali method with those in whom there is a great eagerness and a fundamental sincerity somewhere even in the vital with those whom she meets intimately and who she knows will not resent or misunderstand her severity or take it for a withdrawal of kindness or grace but will regard it as a true grace and a help to their sadhana there are others who cannot bear this method if it was continued they would run a thousand miles away in misunderstanding and revolt and despair what the mother wants is for people to have their full chance of their souls be the method short and swift or long and tortures each she must treat accordingly to his nature date 9th may 1933 if you are afraid of the mother's scolding says shurbindo if you are afraid of the mother's scoldings how will you progress those who want to progress quickly welcome even the blows of mahakali because that pushes them more rapidly on the way question is it possible to have that relation with the mother in which she would feel free to correct me and tell me without any kind of consideration for my feelings what i must do and what i must not do sri aurobindo says for this certainly when the divine consciousness is fully realized there will be no difference between the mother's will and the sadhaks for a relation to exist in which mother can do as you say the sadhak must not be afraid of the mahakali aspect and ask only for sweetness he must be able to take the blows of mahakali as a blessing he must also believe in their vision and judgment and word otherwise when she says or does something unpleasant to his ego that ego will go sulking justifying itself calling her names etc as is the habit with so many in the ashram when she does not do what they like there are very few here who can take this attitude even imperfectly but it is with them that the mother has this relation with others who have a different nature she cannot but behave differently for she has to act with each according to his nature next topic the mother's way of working sri aurobindo says the difficulty about meeting your demand that the mother should plan out and fix a routine for you in everything which you must follow is that this is quite contrary to the mother's way of working in most matters in the most physical things you have to fix a program in order to deal with time otherwise all becomes a sea of confusion and haphazard fixed rules have also to be made for the management of material things so long as people are not sufficiently developed to deal with them in the right way without rules but these things of which you write are different they are concerned with your inner development your sadhana in fact 
even in outward things the mother does not plan with her mind and make a mental map and rule of what is to be done she sees what is to be done in each case and organizes and develops it according to the nature of each case in matters of the inner development and the sadhana it is still more impossible to map out a plan fixed in every detail and say every time you shall step here there in this way or that line and no other things would become so tied up and rigid that nothing could be done there would be no true and effective movement Sri Aurobindo continues to say if the mother asked you to tell her everything it was not in order that she might give you the directions and every detail in which you must obey her it was in order first that they might grow up the complete intimacy in which you would be entirely open to her so that she might pour more and more continuously at every point the divine force into you which would increase the light in you perfect your action deliver and develop your nature it is this that was important all else is secondary important only so far as it helps this or hinders in addition it would help her to give whenever needed the necessary direction the necessary help or warning not always by words more often by a silent intervention and pressure this is her way of dealing with those who are open to her it is not necessary to give express orders at every moment and in every detail especially if the psychic consciousness is open and one lives fully in that it gets the intimation at once and sees things clearly and receives the help the intervention the necessary direction or warning that was what what was happening to a great extent when your psychic consciousness was very active but there was a vital part in which you were not open and which was coming up repeatedly and it is this that has created the confusion and the trouble everything says shri rubindo everything depends on the inner condition and the outward action is only useful as a means and a help for expressing or confirming the inner condition and making it dynamic and effective if you do or say a thing with the psychic uppermost or with the right inner touch it will be effective if you do or say the same thing out of the mind or the vital or with a wrong or mixed atmosphere it may be quite ineffective to do the right thing in the right way in each case and at each moment one must be in the right consciousness it can't be done by following a fixed mental rule which under some circumstances might fit in and under others might not fit in at all a general principle can be laid down if it is in consonance with the truth but its application must be determined by the inner consciousness seeing at each step what is to be done or not done if the psychic is uppermost if the being is entirely turned towards the mother and follows the psychic this can be increasingly done all depends therefore on a mental rule to follow in practice but in getting the psychic consciousness back and putting its light into this vital part and making that part turn wholly to the mother it is not that the question of your going too much to excess of no importance it is of considerable importance but to limit the contact is effective only as a means of helping your vital part to withdraw from this servitude to old moments it is the same everywhere 
the kind of outward obedience you lay stress on asking for a direction in every detail is not the essence of surrender although obedience is the natural fruit and outward body of surrender surrender is from within opening and giving the mind vital physical all to the mother for her to take them as her own and recreate them in their true being which is a portion of the divine all the rest follows as a consequence it would not then be necessary to ask her word and order outwardly in every detail the being would feel and act according to her will her sanction would be sought as the seal of that inner unity receptiveness of her will and obedience date 11th june 1932 Next topic the mother's regard for truth mother heard that excess objected to your working in her room but she brushed it aside at once saying that could have no importance it has nothing to do with her decision which was made on other grounds quite independently of it please note a lie is a lie whoever speaks it If you give credit to what someone or another thinks or says as mother's motive in an action take her statement of her motive as untrue and somebody else who cannot know as sound and true and on that challenge mother for want of frankness is the resulting upset of your fault It is a question of greater confidence in the mother than in the statements or interpretations of other sadhaks or hasty assumptions or inferences of your mind or feelings of your vital maid without having the needed information. If you could get rid of that moment, things would be easier. Date 15th May 1936.